In this video, we're going to talk about Le Chatelier's principle. I know that my French pronunciation probably isn't fabulous, but just take my word for it. That's how we say it. All right, so what we need to look at is what happens when we make change to a system that is at equilibrium. So if we add a reactant, if we add a product, if we remove a reactant or remove a product, or if we add heat or if we cool a system, we need to look at what happens. And the reason that we do have to think about this is because when we make a change to an equilibrium system, that equilibrium system responds to the changes. Remember that it's dynamic. The reactions are happening in the forward and reverse direction. And so because those reactions are occurring, if you change something, it affects the whole system. All right, so let's look at what Le Chatelier's principle says. It says when a stress is placed on an equilibrium system, the equilibrium system will shift to relieve that stress. So it may shift to the right in order to make more products or to reduce the amount of reactants, or it could shift to the left, which would cause it to make more reactants or reduce the amount of products. So the key to working through these problems is identifying the stress and then figuring out which way the equilibrium will shift in the reaction. So let's look at some examples. All right, this is a reaction with a cobalt chloride complex and a cobalt water complex. On the left, you see the cobalt chloride complex, and that's a blue color. And then on the right, you see the cobalt water complex, that is pink. So when we have a, an equilibrium system of both of these in a test tube or a beaker or something like that, it looks kind of purple. And so we have to think about what happens if we add some 12 molar HCl. So we need to look at what the stress is. So think about where hydrochloric acid, the HCl, would affect this reaction. Hopefully you're looking at those chloride ions on the right and saying if I add more hydrochloric acid, I'm going to have more chloride ions in the system. So if it has more chloride ions in the system, it has to shift to relieve that stress. It has too much chloride, so it needs to shift in a direction that causes it to relieve that stress. So it is going to shift to the left because if it has too much chloride, it's going to shift in a way that's going to use up the chloride and get rid of some of that. And so let's think about what it would look like. If you're shifting to the left, it's making more of the reactants. So it's making more of the blue cobalt product. And so it's going to turn more blue. So let's look and see what that looks like. We'll now look at the equilibrium between a cobalt water complex ion, which is pink, and a cobalt chloride complex ion, which is blue. We'll start with two test tubes with the cobalt water complex ion. We add 12 molar hydrochloric acid to one of the tubes. We notice that the solution turns blue. This indicates that the equilibrium has shifted in the reverse direction. When he says that the equilibrium has shifted in the reverse direction, it means that the reaction is shifting from the reactants. I'm sorry. When he's saying that the reaction is shifting in the reverse direction, what he's saying is it is shifting from the products to the reactants. So the reactants are on the left side of the reaction, so we say that the equilibrium shifts to the left. The hydrochloric acid provides a source of chloride ion. As we increase the concentration of the product, the equilibrium shifts in the reverse direction to use up the added chloride ion. So let's look at another example. This is the same reaction. Uh, and it says, what is the stress on the equilibrium if water is added? So look at the reaction, see what you think the water would affect if it were added. I hope that you're looking at the water on the left side of the reaction. I know that there's water in that cobalt water complex on the right, but it's bonded with the cobalt, so adding more water is unlikely to affect those bonds. Water by itself is what is going to be affected by that. 
So think about which way you think that it would shift if we have added water. The stress is that there is now too much water on the reactant side. I hope that you're thinking that it shifted to the right. It's going to try to use up the water to relieve the stress of having too much water on the reactant side. And when it does that, it will turn more pink. So let's look at that. So we're going to start the video back at the same place with the two test tubes. The one on the left is the one for comparison. The one on the right is the one that just had the additional chloride, so it's blue. Add water to the test tube. He's we notice that the solution has turned back to pink. By adding water to the solution, we've shifted the equilibrium back in the forward direction. So you can see that the the water being added causes it to shift to the right, which makes more of the cobalt water complex, which is pink. It's shifting to the right to use up that excess water. All right, let's look at another example. So if you add silver ions to this system, look at this and just think for a minute about what might happen if you add silver ions to this. Now, of course, there's no silver anywhere in this reaction, so some of you may be thinking, I don't know what you're talking about. But hopefully you're looking at those chloride ions and thinking, wait a minute, I think if I put silver in there, they will react with those chloride ions. If they react with the chloride ions, those chloride ions are no longer available. You're reducing the amount of chloride ions in that system. So if you remove chloride ions, it reacts with silver to form silver chloride. Remember that silver chloride is insoluble. It will precipitate out of the solution, and those chloride ions will no longer be available to react in the system. So you're decreasing the amount of chloride ions available. So think about which way it's going to shift to relieve that stress. It has too few chloride ions. It's going to shift to the right to make more. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. Start with two test tubes with the cobalt water complex ion. We add 12 molar hydrochloric acid to one of the tubes. We notice that the solution turns blue. So this is like what we did in the first example. More chloride ions, it shifts to the side to get rid of the chloride ions. It shifts to the left because it turns more blue to get rid of those chloride ions. This indicates that the equilibrium has shifted in the reverse direction. The hydrochloric acid provides a source of chloride ion. As we increase the concentration of the product, the equilibrium shifts in the reverse direction to use up the added chloride ion. We will now add some silver nitrate solution to the cobalt chloride complex ion we notice the formation of a white solid, which is the silver chloride. We also notice that the solution has turned from blue to pink. The silver ion removes chloride ion from solution as solid silver chloride. The equilibrium shifts in the forward direction to try and replace the chloride ion that's been removed. So you can see that when you add the silver, it reacts with the chloride ions to film insoluble silver chloride. So those chloride ions are no longer available to react with the system. They are removed, it decreases the amount of chloride and it causes the reaction to shift to the right, becoming pink again. I know at this point you're probably feeling a little confused and saying to yourself, how would I know that about the silver? This is probably not a problem I would give you on a test, but I do want you to see what happens when you decrease the amount of one of the reactants, and this is a good example to show you that. Let's look at another one. All right, so we have talked about some of the terms endo and exothermic, so we have to think about uh, what the term exothermic means. So hopefully you're sitting there saying exo means out of, thermic means heat. And so when you think of a reaction being exothermic, we know that it gives off heat. So when a reaction is exothermic like this one, this tells you it's exothermic here and I would tell you that, you can think of heat as a product. So I just write plus heat 
on the product side. If it were endothermic, that means it's absorbing heat. So endothermic reactions would have heat as a reactant. So let's look at the stress on the equilibrium if heat is added in this situation. Since it's exothermic, heat is a product. Heat is coming out of the system. So if we add heat, it has too much heat on the, on the product side. We need to use that heat. So we need to shift in a way that is going to use the heat, meaning that it's going to shift to the left to use up the heat and make more of the reactants. So it'll start off pink and it will become blue. So let's take a look at that and see what it looks like. Take a test tube containing the equilibrium mixture. The solution is pink, indicating that we have a high concentration of the cobalt water complex ion. We're going to put this into a warm water bath. As we warm the solution, the solution turns from being pink to blue. If you heat an equilibrium mixture, the equilibrium will shift in the endothermic direction. This is an indication that, that this reaction is endothermic in the reverse direction. So you can see that if you add heat to an exothermic reaction, it's going to shift to the left toward the reactants. Remember that if it's exothermic in one direction, it's going to be endothermic in the other because remember that both reactions are going at the same time, the forward reaction from reactants to products and the reverse reaction from products to reactants. So let's look at the stress on the equilibrium if heat is removed. So again, think of heat as a reactant and heat is on the product side. So if we remove heat, that means we have decreased the amount of heat in the equilibrium system on the product side. We want to relieve that stress of not having enough heat on the product side, so the reaction is going to shift to the right to create more heat. So let's take a look at that part of the video. Cooling the reaction mixture shifts the equilibrium in the exothermic direction. We notice that as we cool this, the solution goes from being blue to pink, indicating that the reaction is exothermic in the forward direction. I hope this is making sense to you. We will go through another example in class because I think this is one of those things where it helps to have uh, us go through some of this together to make sure everybody gets it. I'll see you in class.